Okay, I'd like to demonstrate what can go wrong when working with unprojected data. This is uh, the data that is used in the vector analysis lab for the intro GIS class. And so I'm going to add to my map just all the data at once. I just shift clicked. But what we're really interested in to start with is the um, maritime acts of aggression, this what I call the Assam data because it's the abbreviation. And if we try and zoom to this layer, it it looks like you can see the outline of Africa and you know the northern part of South America, but it's hard to determine where it's plotting up on the map. And I don't usually have a base map going in my map, but I'm going to add one just to see if that helps us figure out what's going on. Boy, if I can get my computer to cooperate. There we go. Okay, so let's add a base map. Well, um, there's blue for ocean, but not a lot else. And if you look closely, you can see that the scale is one to about 2,000, which for global data, something's very, very wrong. So let's take a look at, I'm going to zoom out so we can kind of see where we are. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, and look down here, look at the coordinates. If I hover close to that point, look at the coordinates. They're almost at the origin. Zero, zero for the coordinate system that's being displayed right here. That's very telling. So let's go in here. I'm going to go into the properties and look at the source tab. And first of all, notice here that we've got geographic coordinates. Um, these values are embedded in the data. This, this is information that actually defines where the locations are. Um, this is the north, south, east, westernmost points on the map or extents of the map. The units here are being guessed at by ArcGIS. This is, um, and I say that because of this because I gave this data to you with an unknown coordinate system. So the, the units of measure on these values are flexible. This is user defined, and it comes from the coordinate system. And so we have to make sure that we choose a coordinate system that has units of degrees so that this can plot up correctly. Um, this, the fact that degree is auto-filled here is something new that they've started doing in this version of ArcGIS Pro, but it's not really correct, and I don't know why they would ever do that, because ARC doesn't actually know, um, it, it, it isn't right. It's actually plotting them up right now with unknown units, and so it's plotting them up in the coordinate system of the display. So, like I said, I'm going to look at the coordinate system for the display right now. The coordinate system is a projection. It's WGS 1984, the Web Mercator. This is a projection. WGS 1984 alone is a geographic coordinate system. We're going to talk about this in a couple weeks, but um, the units on a geographic coordinate system are degrees because it's measured in latitude and longitude, and those are angles from the center of the Earth out to the graticule, the, the curved surface. So notice um, that in our coordinate system area, and this is, the, this is the exact same no matter where you're accessing the coordinate systems from, whether you're in a defined projection tool or looking at the coordinate system for a layer or your map. It's organized the same way. We, I can pick favorites, and you can do that by just creating a little star next to your data. At least you could in the olden days. I can't remember how I did it right now. It doesn't matter. Layers, so these are the different coordinate systems from the layers that we have in our map. So the base map comes in in this web mercator, and that's because it's good for always showing north up. This is a geographic coordinate system that must belong to one of our data sets. We have something that's in a cylindrical equal area projection, and then this is our Assam data that's unknown. Okay, but most importantly, there are two folders down here. There's a geographic coordinate system folder, and there's a projected geographic or a projected coordinate system folder. If you go into the projections, you might find world um, coordinate systems, and you might even find something that's WGS 84. 
But notice that that's like the root for all these different projection types. So each one of these, WGS84 is a curved model. It's, it's like the, the closest thing that we can get to a global model of the Earth, the 3D sphere. And then each one of these is a different type of math to flatten that 3D sphere. But all of these are flattened coordinate systems because they're in the projected coordinate system folder. So in order to um, get the correct coordinate system, we need to get into the geographic coordinate system. And it doesn't matter what coordinate system we look at in here, the units for every single one of these is degrees because they're all curved models and they're measuring angles. And so um, I told you in the instructions that the correct coordinate system for our Assam data is the World Geodetic Survey, WGS, from 1984. And so let's go ahead and assign the coordinate system. There are two kind of projection tools. And when I, it's not my <laughs> word projection, it should be almost a transformation tool because it's a mathematical transformation. When we call it a projection, it's really misleading because um, ARC refers often to geographic coordinate systems as a projection file, and that's not correct. So, and again, this tool is called define projection, but unfortunately, we aren't defining a projection. We're defining a coordinate system. We don't, we don't want a projected coordinate system or projection because that's going to flatten the data and recalculate the units of measure for those values and assign them in meters. And so let's go, let's go in here and get to find projection. This is what you use when there's an unknown coordinate system or it's incorrect. So let's put the points in and then I'm gonna go looking for the correct coordinate system. So this is where you have to get off on the right foot. You have to start in this geographic coordinate system folder. And then we're gonna go down to world and we'll find the WGS 1984, just straight Straight old WGS 84, nothing fancy. Okay. One more time, I just want to show you why. Well, it'll get easier, I promise. I don't expect you to totally get this right now, but this is what it boils down to the extent values. These, see how small these are? If these were measured in meters, we would expect all, the entire global data set here. We would expect this to plot up within 180 meters of the origin. We're 67 or 68 units north of the origin, sorry, 44 units south, 174 units to the east, and or left, sorry, west, and then 178 to the east. And if we go back and zoom in on this, if, if those were truly drawing in degrees, the points would cover the entire map but they're being drawn in meters. And we know that's true because we could measure across here. We could, um, let's see, planar metric, make sure we've got, yeah, let's use meters. And if we go all the way across here, this should be, I was gonna say, around 350 meters, because remember from west to east, it was around 175. So, Again, the values are embedded, they're intrinsic in the data, but the units are malleable. And they're, they're attached to the coordinate system that the user can define. And so this data just needs to be assigned degrees officially, and then it'll span the entire um, global map. All right, back to our tool. All right, let's run it. And this is one of those tools that does impact the, the input data itself, it doesn't create um, a new output. But it doesn't screw anything up if you do it wrong because running defined projection wipes the slate clean and you start fresh. So you can't ever really mess something up. You can get confused, don't get me wrong. All right, let's now zoom to layer. Okay, now it looks like we've got data that is um, correctly drawing where it should in the world. We gave it a geographic coordinate system, but the map is in a projection. That's fine. The units for the map 
are, it's the Web Mercator. So, you know, this is a big honking projection. But these are drawing correctly because ArcGIS can do that math on the fly in the background. As long as everything is assigned properly, Arc, you could have, and you saw, every one of these is in their own coordinate system now. If I go to the map and look at layers again, close favorites. Now we have w WGS84, so two of our data sets share this coordinate system. We have some layer that's in cylindrical equal area, and we have the base map that's in the Web Mercator projection. But everything's overlaying correctly because ARC can do that. It just does the math behind the scenes for us. So the only time you run into trouble is when something is unassigned or when it's assigned incorrectly. And that's something that we could experiment with. I could run to find projection again and put this in a projected coordinate system, and it would put it right back down at the equator um, within 180 meters. And I'm saying 180 because that's how many degrees there would be from pole to pole. Um, OK, I hope that makes sense. Um, we are going to talk about coordinate systems in a couple of weeks. I skated through my first 10 years of doing GIS without really understanding coordinate systems at all. The danger with ArcGIS is it can let you get away with that. And it isn't until you run into troubles and realize you don't understand them well enough to fix things. And the fix is, once you understand how, geograph or how, how you understand that coordinate systems work, they're very easy to troubleshoot. It's, it's a really, um, it's a straightforward kind of relationship. So we'll keep working on it. Don't panic if you don't get it. Um, it'll come in time. Questions, let me know.